Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new make sure to subscribe if you like renovation content or any other type of diy and design content today i want to give you guys an update on where we are and our renovation and first things first we actually did get a contractor to give us a quote and we are starting to schedule out the subfloor so yay we have one thing checked off i also just want to chat a second about scheduling and everything that's going on behind the scenes because i feel like the people on youtube are the people who care the most about our lives because it's the longest format of content i may be making an assumption there but i'm going to hope that you care because i'm going to tell you so basically yes we have been dealing with contractor and permit issues that makes everything get drawn out a lot longer and is really annoying but there are a lot of things that i've been doing outside of just renovating the house that makes it so i only have like one or two hours a day to actually work on renovations which is a very intense change because you guys who are watching my content know that i work fast and typically when i'm in a renovation setting i'm going 24 7 so this is a lot different and i want to explain to you guys why so right now i'm actually working on three different renovations there is this one my house that I'm planning and working on physically. Then there's also two upcoming renovations for other people that I have been planning. And the planning period for renovations is very intense, trying to organize everything and it's a lot. I've also been doing virtual design work. Right now I'm talking to three different influencers, TikTokers, YouTubers, whatever, that I am virtually designing for. And that's also a lot of work because I have to keep up with them and keep updating and and do a lot of heavy computer work. On top of that, right now I have five different active brand collaborations that I am either giving them ideas for or directly making the content. And then I have at least three other ones that I know are coming up soon and I have in the back of my mind. So that's a lot if you don't know about brand collaborations, um, but those are very important to me because it's how I make the majority of my income. And for those of you who haven't seen my sponsored content at all, I care a lot about it and I try to integrate it into my content really well. And I love working with brands. It's one of my favorite things. It makes me so excited. So I put a lot of my heart and energy into those and that takes a lot of my time. I also have been spending a lot of my time planning trips and some of those are for renovations, but also personal, a lot of weddings coming up and then me and Dylan are going to Paris for our seven year anniversary and I have never been to Paris. So that takes a lot of planning because neither of us really know what we're doing. If you have any Paris recommendations, please comment them down below because I wanna make the most of the trip. And then there's just a lot of loose end stuff. Like I'm trying my best to post on social media every single day. So content creation is a long time. And then also just working on house stuff, making calls and trying to get people to come in here and fix things. There's also some behind the scenes projects that I have been on call for, having meetings and interviews and different stuff like that that I can't tell you guys about yet. I'm also still moving. We haven't fully moved yet and I'm trying to be in my niece's lives and I'm trying to make friends in my new town and there's just so much going on. I don't have enough hours in the day so I feel like I need to tell you guys this because it can be really confusing to watch things slowly change and that's also why I've had Dawn in a lot more of the YouTube videos lately. I hope you have been enjoying it. He's able to do some more work without me involved and film the process and then get it in the video. So yeah, I need to be cloned six times and then I will be good to work on the renovation 24 seven, but that is not my reality right now. So I just want you guys to know everything that's happening. <laughs> just out for a stroll. <laughs>
So we carried this thing in, it fit through the door and we got it to the living room, but it didn't quite fit down into the basement. So we think our only option is to take it apart in sections and then piece it back together in the basement. So wish us luck. Dylan has taken everything apart. I'm going to attempt to upholster all of this stuff, which I've never actually upholstered before. I've done so many DIYs, but this is something that I have not gotten around to yet. So it's going to be a bit of an adventure, but I'm really excited. All right, so we moved this purple backing piece outside. As you can see, we've gone ahead and removed most of the stables already. Uh, so if I peel this back, in this center area, there was a foam backing that we, for the most part, took off. Still a little bit of removal and sanding to go with that to get rid of the residue. But we're gonna be actually using this wood piece as the back, and it worked out pretty well that it was made of a wood that we like. So we're gonna go ahead and get this prettied up. So yeah, let's go. All right, so we got the last stapled edge of the fabric out. If you can see, there's all these little staples in the wood around it and i don't really know what else the staples would be here for unless to hold the wood in place so i'm hoping that's not the case <laughs> So we've got it pretty close to prepped. I ended up actually having to use the angle grinder with the same attachment that we're using on the beams inside because the buildup and residue from the adhesive on the foam backing was a bit too thick for the sandpaper to do any sort of work efficiently. So I broke out the angle grinder and it got it done real quick, except the two little corners where the disc can't fit. So might have to get in there with the sanding attachment. So this is actually gonna be a good test of how the sanding attachment we plan to use on the beams is gonna work. So it works with the multi-tool. You wanna pop off the blade and then pop on the attachment. It's got a Velcro thing and then you just pop on your sandpaper and you've got a nice corner to get into the edges. So let's test how it works. Pretty darn good if you ask me. Obviously it's not as quick as using the angle grinder, but it definitely got into the corner really well. And it wasn't too slow, so. I'm looking forward to using it on the beams. And now next step is to use our wood filler and go around and get all of the staple holes. All right, we got all our wood filler in and every spot that I wanna fill. So we're just gonna let it dry and then come back and sand it. You can actually see 
how well it's working over here where it started to dry a little bit. There's all sorts of staple holes over here. This is the spot where I showed with all those staples in it. You can't even tell that they were there. And it's still not done drying, so. So here is what it is looking like once we have reupholstered it. I am loving it already, even though it's not even like close to being done yet. So the wood that's back there is the wood that was already a part of the structure and it actually looks pretty good for what we're going for. I'm just going to add a sealant of some sort to make it match the color of the actual cabinets better and make it a little bit more finished. So here's the cabinetry sample I have and as you can tell it looks very similar. It's just slightly darker and finished so I think once I seal everything make sure that all of the holes are filled and seal it that it will look exactly like it which I'm I'm really excited about. So I'm going to have the electrician wire an outlet right about here so that way it's hardwired and good to go. And then something I also want to address is I said that I want to turn this into an extra guest bed and I still want to do that but because of how this thing is built there was metal in the back that acts as a main support and I couldn't get rid of it to have it be modular in that way. So what I want to do instead is build two ottomans to go in front of it that will act as the extra cushions for a bed and we will build those from scratch with the leftover fabric that we have and then those ottomans will be able to rotate and create a c-shape also so that they're multi-purpose and that way we can have a seating area with a table in between if we want a lot of people sitting around one round table and then those same little poofs could be stored away in the cabinetry right next to it so that is the plan also i am not having the electrician move the panel down here anymore because he said that we would still need a panel up there and it would just be two panels so we're just going to keep it in the living room and conceal it and so i don't have to worry about any sort of electrical over there anymore. But that is what it is looking like, so now it's just time to wait for all of the cabinets to come in. So the garage is kind of at a standstill right now because we're trying to find someone to do the floors before we build the stairs and everything like that. So for right now, I really wanna build that paintbrush holder that I had mocked up on the wall. It's a really fun little orange squiggle and I feel like that would help get our creative juices flowing creating something that is pretty and not just functional. Product. I am so in love with it. I didn't actually realize that the paintbrushes were going to be the same exact color as the paintbrush holder, but I think it's kind of cool and I'm really excited to hang it up with the back plates once we have this level up. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did like it, make sure to give it a like because that would really help to support me and my channel. And also subscribe if you have not yet already so you don't miss any new updates. And I'll see you guys all next week for some more design stuff. Bye guys.